Welcome back everyone, it's me Matmus, thank you so much for joining me today. We are discussing the beautiful warrior class of armoured fighting vehicles from the British Army. Of course I have an extensive amount of uh, mechanical background on these vehicles for sure and I've operated them on uh, operational tour in Afghanistan. And I do have to say they are pretty much one of my favourite armoured fighting vehicles out there in the world other than the Challenger 2. It has performed so well during its service life to every extent of what you can classify an armoured fighting vehicle, especially an infantry fighting vehicle needs to do. As you can see, the Remi variant here that I use, the 512, just as capable in doing what it needs to do as any other tracked vehicle that the British Army has. Now, the Warrior has an extensive history since Bosnia, Kosovo, Iraq, Afghanistan. It has pretty much served in every major conflict since its service and has performed outstandingly. And I can really attest to that. It really has done very, very well. Now, you're seeing a lot of different footage here from all over the uh, background of this vehicle, whether it be, uh, you know, with the different turret that was actually going to be... Uh, somewhat being implemented with the Bradley systems, but it got uh, changed over to the Raden weapon system that we're looking at now. And that is what's tying us into our discussion today with the Warrior, is the new upgrade. Well, I guess it's not really new. It's been around for quite some time, and that's why I want to discuss a little bit about it today. The 40 millimeter uh, main gun that the Warrior has been, I guess, told it's going to get this update. Um, we're going to see this in huge improvement. It's going to be amazing. And Honestly, I, I haven't seen enough of it. It's it's an interesting thing to talk about because Warrior is the staple infantry fighting vehicle of the British Army. And when you don't give it this upgrade, it's really lacking against other military vehicles out there around the world. Because the Raden Cannon, although an amazing weapon system, the 30mm, is very primitive in its design. It's a 30mm, uh, 3 or 6 manually round loaded system. Uh, I've used it uh, myself. It is a lot of fun to fire. A very capable weapon system. Uh, the munitions it fires, both armor penetrating and HE, are uh, definitely capable of most engagements. But uh, we are talking about the modern age now. And the vehicle is starting to hear some challenges now with going up against more sophisticated armored weapon systems out there today. And Warrior needs to catch up with the times. And the British Army know that. They've been looking at upgrading Warriors extensively for a very long time. And lots of different programs, lots of different concepts, ideas... But one of the key features that always comes up is the beautiful 40mm caseless or telescopic ammunition gun. Now, we all know of the uh, system that's been coming out for some time. They've been researching it and really doing some heavy testing on it. And I found a rather interesting article recently from uh, Defense News about how the weapon system is actually getting closer and closer to being actually produced for the future, which I think it's time, and it really, it truly is time. This weapon system has uh, knocked the socks off many of the uh, users of it that have been trialing it and testing it, and, you know, it definitely supersedes uh, the, you know, 30mm rod and 100%. Now, the key attributes of the 40mm, there's a few main things that really we need to take away as to why they're upgrading the, the 40mm from the 30mm. The Raden is, as I said, an exemplary weapon system, however it has its faults. It is a manually loaded system. With it being manually loaded, it does cause, uh, you know, time in terms of you having to manually fix it and, and maintain it and load it yourself. That is time you don't have as a gunner, as an operator inside the turret of the warrior. You don't have a separate loader, you're doing everything yourself, which is something you really don't want to be trying to do when you're trying to engage a vehicle. You should be optics all the time, looking and scanning. And you don't want to be messing around with, uh, with the ammunition of the commander, either or. That's not where you want to be. And this new weapon system is really focusing on uh, stabilization. So the gun itself is now fully stabilized, whereas uh, Rodman was not. It was very manually uh, traverse, elevate kind of thing. There's uh, a full turret upgrade as well. There's a lot of things going on that are changing on the full, I guess, 40mm upgrade. It's not just a simple change of the, the barrel and the weapon system inside. There's, there's a multitude of other things, targeting systems... There's uh, some fancy upgrades, and actually, let's take a look at some of these fancy upgrades before we go any further, because I really want to kind of highlight 
the, the key facts and the figures that are coming out for what the upgrades actually are for this vehicle. So let's take a look at this vehicle then. So Lockheed Martin are the primary contractor for the Warrior Capability Sustainment Program or WCSP. Now the Warrior, as I said, doesn't just have its own turret upgrade. There's other things that are going on. Lockheed are working very close with the UK Ministry of Defence to upgrade this vehicle wholeheartedly. It's not just a few little changes. They really want to upgrade a full change to this vehicle and you know the warrior doesn't need much in my eyes it does exactly what it says on the tin but unfortunately there's some little tiny pieces here and there that need to give it up to the modern day standard so as you're seeing this beautiful turret upgrade we are seeing a fire on the move capability with a stabilized ct40 cannon and an automatic two nature ammunition handling system which basically means the commander or gunner does not have to interchange between ammunition manually it does it automatically it's a selector switch the chain gun is still implemented with the brass flying out the front there never been a big fan of the chain gun so it's you know it's a little disappointing they're keeping that uh, machine gun on there but it looks like uh, you can actually recede the gun into the weapon system platform to actually fix it there's some other improvements including some armor some mine blast protection and uh, some you know protection to the optics and the the weapon system itself Pretty standard if you get an upgrade weapon system, you can upgrade the sights. New environmental control system, driver's night vision system, which is, I mean, it is what it is. Network enabled platform management system. I'm not sure what that is. It seems like it may have some communication between uh, other vehicles, whether it be mechanically or, you know, fire systems. Uh, crew briefing system. This is all digital stuff. So this is all going to be involved in the turret itself or, you know, the crew members in the back being able to see what the commander sees. For the most part, we're seeing a, a primary turret upgrade. There are some other key features, uh, such as the digital situation awareness cameras. We're always seeing cameras on modern-day armored fighting vehicles nowadays. Now, they want to see visibility 360. They're putting cameras all over the damn thing. Never been a huge fan of putting cameras and relying upon cameras everywhere. You can see they're putting video sources for mounted troops and crew members and more cameras. Look at all the dust you're seeing here, guys. Okay, cameras will get coated in dirt instantaneously. And if you want to be the person every 10 minutes gets out and fluffs off the camera of dust, you you, you go ahead and do that. But as I said, the 40mm is definitely the showstopper today for the changes to this vehicle. Now, as I said, negotiations have been underway for quite some time to upgrade this vehicle, and the contract to update the British Army's fleet of warrior vehicles has been, according to the Ministry of Defence, been looking at about a year's wait time. Now, the two sides from both the MOD and Lockheed have been pushing very hard to try and get the contract in as quickly as it can, but the supply chain is struggling to actually get ready for the upgrade because there is a lot of warriors, and as I said, you cannot get this wrong. If you try and upgrade the fleet of warriors and it's not going to work correctly, you're going to have a really bad time. The effort to progress the long-running Warrior Capability Sustainment Development Program into the manufacturing phase has come at the back of Lockheed Martin successfully achieving 20 Battlefield Mission Assessments, which is a key milestone in the Reliability Growth Test Program now underway. The MOD said in March it would open negotiations for manufacturing contracts once the department is satisfied with the progress on reliability trials. In late August, Lockheed Martin achieved that milestone. The company said that in cooperation with the British Army's Armoured Trials and Development Unit, it had fired thousands upon rounds from the new CTAI developed 40mm cannon and had also driven more than 5,000 kilometers and achieved the battlefield mission assessment with flying colors. Lockheed Martin's Warrior Program Director Lee Fellows expects to deal in the latter half of 2020. The company is keen to get production contracts signed and sealed, but they still need to get it right so it will take as long as it needs to. And, Mr. Fellows said, getting it done at a pace and quality are equally important. Quantities, the mix of variants and affordability, are among the items to be discussed. You have to remember that there is so many of these vehicles in the British Army inventory that, as I said, it's not as simple as just doing a quick upgrade. This is a major overhaul of the turret, infrastructure and systems that allow it to operate as an infantry fighting vehicle. There have been discussions on how to overcome issues of design authority ownership, and it's also reportedly part of the build-up to a production contract. BAE holds the design authority on the existing Legacy Warrior, but Lockheed Martin holds the approval for the extensive upgrade, particularly the new turret. The expectation is there will be a collaboration with BAE, and they are talking with them already as part of the negotiations. Neither the government officials or the industry executives would actually comment on the upgrades and the number of the British Army wants of these upgrades. Roughly 740 vehicles were delivered to the British Army starting in 1988, 
but a number were destroyed in Iraq and Afghanistan, and I can first-hand tell you I've seen some of those vehicles that were lost. Of course, a number of these vehicles have been earmarked for battlefield support duties that don't require a new turret, such as the vehicle I primarily use as the 512 or 513 repair and recovery variants. At one time, the number of hulls to be updated was in the region of around 380, but suppliers at a company briefing in March said as the British Army downsizes and budgets become more challenging, the figure slipped to around 265 or lower. Some people say that in the next 18 months or so it will bring further reliability growth trials, but their major risks have been removed and the testing for sure has not really unearthed any significant problems, which is a good thing. The update is considered one of the Armoury's top priorities alongside other vehicle programs including the Challenger 2 main battle tank upgrades and the procurement of the beautiful Boxer mechanised infantry vehicle, which I have done a video on in the past, from the German company Artec. Lockheed Martin was awarded a development deal to upgrade warrior vehicles in 2011, but the program really has been dogged with program problems that have slowed progress overall towards a production deal by several years. The update program includes the beautiful CTIA cannon, but of course we see more architecture and modular protection systems also placed on there. I can see this being a top priority for the British Army for the fact of the combat environments they're trying to put armoured fighting vehicles in today. They're looking back at these sort of, you know, open prairie or open field Cold War style battlefield techniques and stepping away from the more sort of insurgency Afghanistan based um, conflict which I was obviously involved with. They want to have a bit more punch. 40mm is giving a little bit more capacity than it is the 30mm. As much as as I said I love the rod on the 40mm is really giving you a little bit more uh, oomph and a little bit more reliability and a lot more um, you know agility to actually use the weapon system because the rounds can be changed very quickly. There are 70 rounds in the ready racks which basically means you don't need to um, upload or reload the weapon system after 70 rounds which is quite a significant amount of rounds. The vehicle itself is preloaded which is almost as you're about to see in the video here kind of like an aircraft preloaded before it sets out and then is only needed to be reloaded once it comes back off the battlefield into a resupply area. So we'll take a quick look at what the British Army thinks of this upgrade package and what they're actually doing in the background. We're conducting reliability growth trials uh, on the Warrior CSP. So what that means is they're doing a number of battle runs and, and they're testing the vehicle by uh, certain serials firing main armament, which is the 40mm and the coax machine gun. The key upgrades is basically the turret. The turret is completely changed. So inside there you've got um, the 40mm cannon and that has capability of firing a number of different ammunition natures including uh, armour piercing, uh, HE and HE airburst. Also inside the turret we've got a new sighting system for the commander to use screens and controllers rather than like legacy where we'd have to load manually uh, three or six rounds in the gun at one time. If you compare the, the two for the legacy and this one, this is just absolute, uh, absolute game changer in what we've had before. Now with this stabilised platform, you can fire on the move as well keeping the image inside for the gunner absolutely still, even though the vehicle is travelling at speed over cross country and he can still engage targets with the main armament. The physical burden has been sort of taken away because all the preparation of loading the weapon system has gone. It's a bit like an aircraft, so before the aircraft takes off, all the ammunition and weapons get loaded, that's what the turret is like now, so everything gets done before you leave camp and leaving the commander the ability to look through the sights and, uh, and do what he's there to do. So there you have it folks, this is what's coming. It looks like Warrior is getting that much needed upgrade and it looks like the British Army is really taking this seriously when it comes to trials and development. And I'm really, really glad to see that, that they're taking the due diligence to ensure that this weapon system works well because we know the Warrior performs so damn good and you wouldn't want to, you know, downgrade it with an upgrade that's not suitable for what you want it to do. So it's amazing that they're actually putting some really good research and trials in there to ensure that it is impeccable when it comes out. And I can assure you that with this upgrade, and I'm going to I'm going to pause this, 
it will be my favorite infantry fighting vehicle in the world. Currently, the CV-9040 is pretty much up there. Um, Warrior close second. But with this new upgrade now, because basically the Warrior is going to get what the CV-9040 has with the Warrior chassis and, and engine and uh, capability of its cross-country, the Warrior will be my most commendable infantry fighting vehicle out there, hands down. And I can attest to it because I know what the vehicle in Legacy is capable of right now. If all these upgrades are actually being implemented and they work and they succeed and do everything that we've asked them or the British Army's asked them to do, it's going to be a game changer, guys and girls. This thing is going to be absolutely outstanding. It's already outstanding, so I'm really excited to see this upgrade come out for this vehicle in the future. Guys, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did enjoy, please, please leave me a like. It takes two seconds. Just hit that stupid little thumb. It helps me a huge bunch here. Also, if you're new to my channel, I'd really, really encourage you to click the little subscribe button. Be notified of some upcoming military videos that I'll do in the future. I do a lot of review and sort of updates of uh, military equipment on this channel. And if you hit the little bell by the subscribe button, you'll also be given a little heads up via email or message on YouTube that I've actually uploaded because YouTube, you know, they don't like military content channels. And if you guys can be notified to come hang out and, and see some of my content, I'd really appreciate it. Those of you who have been contributing, whether it be on live stream or membership or Patreon, which is my um, support page for donations, thank you all so very, very much. I I truly can't express how much I appreciate each and every one of you for doing so, and each of every one of you just for stopping by and watching today. Um, please check out the description box below if you do wish to support my Patreon, or any kind of other social media links that are in there, including my Discord for just coming out of a chat, Facebook, etc., Twitter, all that good stuff. And I hope to see you on the next video. All the best, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.